Hello, and welcome to the Project Subsidium uh, Endpoint Forensics Kill Chain 3 walkthrough. Uh, before we go through the actual walkthrough, uh, I'd like to draw a little context around what this presentation is. <clears throat> so first of all, what is Project Obsidian? Uh, Obsidian is a project that the Blue Team Village has been working on for a few years now. Uh, it is designed, we created a fictitious company. Uh, we staffed that fictitious company with employees. <clears throat> and then we had uh, the red team, the Project Obsidian red team, attack that, that network. And from there, we did incident response, uh, forensic examination, malware reverse engineering, cyber threat intelligence, and cyber threat hunting. This presentation today is really the endpoint forensics part of it. So the forensics team uh, will have several presentations. This one is Kill Chain 3. <clears throat> and it covers only looking at the endpoints from a forensics perspective. To do that, we did collections on the machines in the environment after the environment was attacked. <clears throat> I'll show a little bit of a timeline. We're not going to focus on the timeline because mostly what I want to show in this presentation is the artifacts, how we would look at the artifacts, how we would uh, draw conclusion from those artifacts. <clears throat> and then a small demo of uh, what it looks like when you would uh, actually do the analysis. Uh, here we're seeing the timeline. We'll see several slides, and I'm not going to really cover these, but I just wanted to cover <clears throat> the kinds of things that we'll see in today's presentation. Uh, we'll see some, uh, some bloodhound being run in the environment, SMB scanning, uh, connections from a machine called RDP01 to domain controllers, we're going to focus mostly on three machines, uh, RDP-01, which is the source of where the attacks came from, and then uh, some activity on the domain controllers. We'll see some malicious admins being added via automation. We'll see some evidence that the actor tried to exfil some data, some lateral movement, dumping of credentials via uh, dumping LSAS, um, and then uh, NTLM downgrade to allow uh, less secure hashes to be dumped, uh, which could be cracked offline, and then security logs being cleared. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's see the first piece of evidence that we notice in this environment. One of the things that we look at very often when we're looking at a, a possibly compromised environment is the, the 7045 message. Um, and this one does not disappoint on the domain controller, uh, dc.magnumtempest.financial. We see power, uh, a PSExec being run on that machine uh, via the PSExec service. Um, and, uh, and furthermore, uh, we don't see any additional uh, 7045 messages, but, but this is uh, something that we'll keep in mind as we, as we look more at the data. Uh, one of the things that we do when we analyze a machine is we look for for files that look like they're hostile now actors don't always name their files obvious uh this is a hostile file you know uh dot txt but <clears throat> in this case we did see uh several files that that looked like they could be uh created by the attacker one of them was this bloodhound zip file on pat Reese's desktop uh, we saw several other files indicating that uh, PowerSploit had been run and the invoke port scan uh, module had been run on the machine. <clears throat> In addition, we saw some files that indicated credential dumping. Uh, and uh, evidence indicates that the first one was using the task manager, uh, LSAS memory dump, and the second uh, using a technique uh, to use run DLL and execute comm services DLL to, to dump um, LSAS. In addition, we find some other very interesting on the Brett Socium uh, desktop, four files called computers.txt, 1.txt, 2.txt, and 3.txt. <clears throat> and diving into those files a little further, <clears throat> we identify that they're a list of IP addresses. Now, this is important because when we look at these files uh, as an investigator, now we have 
some uh, evidence to decide the next set of machines we should look at. Now, those four files were used by PSExec on the RDP01 machine to automate adding <clears throat> uh, hostile users to the local, uh, local administrators group, right? We see the uh, addition of combo security, uh, a user ID called Jimbo, a user ID called Hass, and a user ID called Andy uh, using PSXEC and automating that using these four files. So diving into some of the evidence, the first place we're looking here is at Pat Reese's uh, PowerShell console history. And <clears throat> again, we see that they used uh, the Bloodhound uh, tool to uh, scan the environment, find vulnerabilities in uh, Active Directory. Um, we also see, uh, just as an aside, uh, this LSAS dump that we had talked about earlier. Uh, this is coming from running, running Chainsaw against the Sysmon operational uh, event log. And <clears throat> uh, Chainsaw identified this activity, uh, event ID 11, as LSAS memory dump uh, file creation. Looking further into some of the evidence uh, we find in uh, Pat Reese's uh, console history, PowerShell console history, uh, execution of port scan uh, running against uh, the subnet 172.16.50, um, looking for uh, evidence, uh, looking for uh, port 445 being active. <clears throat> Uh, again, looking further at this evidence, we see evidence that uh, the invoke share finder module was used. And uh, looking a little bit further down <clears throat> at the log, we see evidence of uh, Mimi cats being run in the environment to uh, dump the uh, to dump the hashes, LSAS hashes. Um, next. Looking further at, again, Pat Reese's uh, console history, <clears throat> PowerShell console history, we see this dump file that we had identified earlier. Console history doesn't contain uh, dates and times in it, but going back to the creation time uh, that we saw earlier of this dump file, we can get an idea in our timeline of when this uh, activity took place. Looking further at browser history, we would identify, the, uh, we collected browser history using Velociraptor, and then taking that browser history, uh, converted it to a CSV file, and then took that CSV file and put it into a reporting mechanism um, that uh, I use called ACH report. Uh, using this, uh, and, and I'll show that in a little bit, <clears throat> we see that uh, this machine reached out to file.pizza, and transfer.sh, uh, indicating that the actor wanted to take the data from the machine and exfil it out. We all see, also see uh, it reaching out to interact.sh. Now, <clears throat> this one might say that this could be evidence of exfiltration. Interact.sh is actually an out-of-band detection mechanism. It's used uh, when you would, when a, a hostile actor would uh, execute uh, uh, an attack, and then this interact.sh is used to report uh, on whether the attack was successful or not. In this case, we don't see the typical URL we would see from interact.sh. So the actor reached out to interact.sh and was likely just looking at it, uh, probably not being used for exfil. Looking further into the evidence, again, we see in the Sysmon logs, uh, event ID 13 uh, and PowerShell, I mean, uh, uh, Chainsaw uh, identified that this was likely an NTLM downgrade. So this is uh, at 1909 and at 2054, we saw the actor uh, execute an NTLM downgrade. Uh, the idea in an NTLM downgrade is to force the machine to allow insecure uh, hashing 
uh, and then those credentials can be dumped, those hashes can be dumped, and they're easier to crack offline. Uh, so we see evidence and of that uh, activity. And if we wanted to, we could actually look in the user's uh, uh, registry, uh, actually not in the user's registry, in the machine registry, uh, HK local machine, and we would find the evidence uh, in LM compatibility level uh, NTLM min client sec and uh, restrict sending NTLM traffic, we would find ev evidence in those keys uh, that the uh, NT that NTLM had been set to, to allow downgrading. Looking at this activity in uh, Chainsaw, we also see further evidence of PowerShell being executed in the environment. Uh, kind of just an added thing, we were really looking <clears throat> at the NTLM downgrade, but uh, this is what you'll find often when looking at evidence is other pieces will pop out. Uh, you'll take note of them and then add them into your timeline. Here we're seeing uh, evidence of PS exec. Now this is important because what we see here is the two machines that are being attacked, right? We see DCO2 and RDP01. So we see RDP01 authenticating to DCO2, and then we see uh, DCO2 running uh, PSExec, running the service that allows PSExec. Um, and you'll notice that all of the timestamps are 859. So this is a strong correlation that RDP01 uh, authenticated to DCO2 and ran PowerShell, I'm, I'm, I keep saying PowerShell, ran PS exec uh, on that machine. Uh, again, we mentioned earlier <clears throat> that uh, these files found on the desktop, this desktop, uh, computers.txt, uh, 1.txt, 2.txt, and 3.txt were uh, used to automate PowerShell to uh, add uh, hostile actors to the administrator, hostile user IDs to the administrators group. And here we see that evidence in <clears throat> the Sysmon logs, uh, again, extracted using uh, Chainsaw and formatted <clears throat> using ACH report. So these are uh, event ID one that uh, we saw Chainsaw identify as uh, Hurricane Panda, but uh, really what we're looking at here is PowerShell being used to automate uh, adding uh, hostile administrators to several machines uh, that are located in those TXT files, IP addresses located in those TXT files. Uh, on the machines themselves, here we're seeing on <clears throat> DC the commands being executed uh, and uh, we see combo security being added with a password of B4BY metal, um, an important piece of information because now we can go to that machine and we know both the hostile user that was added and its password. Uh, we also see here later on in this log evidence that the event log uh, the event logs were, were cleared, application security and system. <clears throat> Another piece of added information <clears throat> that we can add to what we know about this machine is we saw, we see now Pat Rhesus in his console history that uh, Mimi Cats was run, <clears throat> invoke Mimi Cats from PowerShell Empire. Uh, and these hashes were used, uh, you'll see the hash being used to escalate this machine to uh, administrator. As mentioned earlier, um, we see now uh, using Chainsaw, uh, Chainsaw identified that the event logs had been cleared. Uh, this would be an important time in our timeline because it would define the, the point in time where we can really, uh, we really won't know uh, about what happened. So uh, once the event logs were cleared, um, data previous to this 
would not be available to us in the event log. So we would have to look to other pieces of evidence to identify uh, activity on this machine. Okay, uh, that was a real quick run through of you know, the evidence that we looked at. Uh, actually, um, not a lot of pieces uh, or not a, a lot of artifacts, but a lot of information being gathered. So <clears throat> let's take a look at some of that data in its, in its native form or in the form that, that you know, we, we would review as we gathered information about this machine. First, on the DC system, uh, I mentioned that we were looking at the 7045 messages. So here we're looking at uh, the system uh, event log. Um, in this case, probably the best way to look at this data would be to filter the log, uh, looking for 7045. And sure enough, uh, as we mentioned in our, our walkthrough earlier, we see the evidence of uh, PowerShell, uh, the PowerShell service piece uh, being run on the on the domain controller. Uh, we also mentioned on RDP01. Let's see, we're looking at DC here. RDP01. This is the 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 report tool that I use. Um, this report tool does not do a lot of the. Uh, uh, of the parsing of the data. It does some parsing, but mostly it's used to put all of the data to run the parsing utilities uh, and put them all in one place. So what we're going to look at is we identify that Bloodhound was run in the environment. And here we see that uh, Velociraptor collected the console history, PowerShell console history of uh, Pat Rhesus. And this reporting tool simply shows the, the activity uh, that, that, was, uh, that was in that console history. And here we see the execution of uh, a bloodhound and then uh, the file name that it was saved under. And this gives us uh, information on if we look at that file uh, when that was run. Now, that's not an indication of the first time it was run. It was It's really an indication of, of what is available to us. So Bloodhound could have been run five times, four times. It could have been run once. Uh, but what we have in this evidence is that Bloodhound was run and that it was run at a specific time. We also identified um, that a port scan was run. So uh, again, looking in this console history, we identify that uh, the port that port scan was run uh, from uh, from PowerSploit. Uh, one of the things we previously identified was the dump file uh, created by running com running uh, com services dll through the through run dll uh creating this dump file which would be a dump of lsas uh now if we look at that uh search uh, for c colon backslash dump we also find here is when that was run so looking at rdp01 we see uh that dump file being created and uh in the uh, in the uh, Sysmon uh, event log, um, Chainsaw identified <clears throat> this activity and uh, reported it, and we just we just take that and put it into this reporting format. Uh, another thing that we saw earlier was evidence of. <clears throat> at least attempts to exfiltrate data. Uh, so looking at the activity around that time, uh, we see the actor reaching out to file pizza transfer.sh. And if we look a little bit further down, we also see the actor uh, reaching out to web wormhole.io. 
Uh, these are all uh, evidence that the actor uh, was at least interested in exfiltrating the data out of the environment. One of the other things we saw, uh, we mentioned earlier, was an NTLM downgrade attack. So here, looking at the chainsaw output, uh, we see what we had seen earlier, which is uh, the NTLM uh, chainsaw identified this as NTLM, a net NTLM downgrade. And uh, again, we could go to the registry itself if we wanted to have some corroborating evidence. We could go to the registry itself and uh, show that those registry keys had indeed been modified. Uh, furthermore, on DCO2, uh, we also identified that uh, PowerShell, uh, uh, PowerShell, the PS exec had been run on that machine also. Uh, we see that in a event ID of 11. So let's look for event ID 11. And we saw that activity at about at 2059. So uh, as we look through this data, Go down to 2059. And we see uh, the evidence that PS exec had been run on this machine at uh, 205957. All right. So looking further at our reporting tool, um, we see on RDP01, this evidence on RDP01 that uh, PS exec, and again, this is you know just what we had seen uh, in the screenshot. But here we're looking at the evidence itself. Um, event ID one uh, identified by Chainsaw as PowerShell exec automating the addition of uh, combo security to uh, the administrators group on that set of uh, IP addresses in the computer.txt, uh, 1.txt, 2.txt, and 3.txt files. Uh, as we look at this data, we could then look around it uh, and see that the actor had also done some uh, discovery of the environment, running Who Am I uh, and uh, other activity. Uh, again, we see the, the dump of LSAS. So uh, looking at this data in context, uh, we can identify the times that this activity happened. And we get a better idea of sort of what the actor was doing on this machine. And that can help us draw conclusions about what the actor was after, what they were interested in, uh, and uh, what they uh, accomplished, or may, and sometimes what they didn't accomplish. So uh, looking at uh, the domain controller, right, we'll see the evidence that that activity was successful on the domain controller. So let's do a find and let's look for combo security. And here we see that uh, on the actual machine that net user combo security was run. And, and again, uh, we're able to draw some context around, around times and activity uh, on this machine. Moving back to RDP01, We also saw the pass the hash escalation or elevation activity. Um, and again, looking at uh, Pat Reese's 
console history, PowerShell console history. We don't have times, uh, but we do have a good picture of what the actor did uh, using PowerShell. Not entirely, not all the things the actor did, but, but the activity that the actor uh, did on this machine uh, when using PowerShell. Uh, the other, the last thing we're going to look at, of course, is this evidence that uh, the actor cleared uh, the event logs. Uh, we can see not only the execution of that command. Uh, oops, that the event logs were cleared but we can get an idea of exactly when that happened, right? By looking at uh, what is left in the event box uh, after they're cleared. Okay, so recapping uh, what we did uh, on this machine to analyze it, and to draw some conclusions. Uh, we had uh, an environment that was compromised. We ran Velociraptor on the machine to gather uh, telemetry and artifacts. Uh, Sysmon was running on the machine, so we used that as the basis for a lot of our uh, conclusions. We ran Chainsaw on the machine uh, to look at the event logs and uh, identify hostile activity. Chainsaw uses uh, Sigma rules to identify hostile activity. We took that data and we put it in a reporting to tool, ACH report, to put all the data in one place to make it easier to kind of uh, draw context around uh, times and activities. Uh, and we also use a tool called MFT dump, which takes the MFT uh, which Velociraptor collected, turns that into a comma separated values file, a CSV file, and then ACH report can ask that file questions about uh, files that are identified on that machine. And this is where we get, we got some timestamps of when those hostile files were created and how they were created, what tools were used to create them. That concludes uh, the, our walkthrough of Kill Chain 3. Uh, to learn further about Project Obsidian, about Blue Team Village, uh, please join us on our Discord channel. Join the conversation. Uh, we'll be releasing all of this data as open source. We'll be providing it to the community for lots of reasons. Um, one is so that you can walk through the data using your own tools or, or the tools we used um, to learn more uh, and to gain some hands-on experience of you know how your workflow would uh, would would go when you're analyzing data you're learning to analyze data uh, the second thing is that we hope that this will be used by people with with uh, new tools so as new tools come out new, uh, blue team tools are always come out coming out uh, this data can be used to uh, test those tools to see if uh, the same conclusions are drawn or if those tools find other information that we may not have uncovered um, and also uh, you can join the conversation uh, on uh, twitter we're at blue team village or if you want to learn more about the blue team village uh, you can go to our website uh, blueteamvillage.org.